Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. God bless Hallelujah. you. Bless you for another blessed Sunday that the Lord has made. We thank God for this uh, Sunday that we set aside to honor the mothers. We thank God for all the mothers on this blessed Mother's Day. And those that are uh, in assembly in, in the house of God this morning, those that New Beginnings who was present this morning with us. Mm -hmm. Thank God for your, your views and following us Facebook and YouTube. The Lord has touched your heart to be a, a blessing to the ministry. We would like to uh, show your generosity and bless us with a gift. You can catch us at New Beginnings Community Church Lamar on Givelify. And we appreciate your gifts, none too small, none too great. All appreciated. We have a, another lesson this morning. By the help of the Lord and the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost this morning. Mm -hmm. This morning, lesson entitled, uh, Worship Him in Spirit and in Truth. Worship him in spirit and in truth. And our uh, focus verse is coming out of the Gospel of John, the fourth chapter, and the 24th verse. That's our focus verse. And after we read that, we'll go back up to uh, 21st and read back down. First, let us pray. The gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come this morning thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness, Lord. We thank you for being such an awesome God. We thank you for being the only God of our lives, Lord. We pray that you continue to lead us and guide us in the path of righteousness for thy name's sake. We thank you this morning for a mind to assemble, to congregate, to look upon thy faith. You say where two or three are gathered, that... You would be in the midst. Your presence would be here. We pray, Father, that you would speak uh, through your word according to thine purpose. And we'll praise you. We'll glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of John, the fourth chapter, 24th verse. Uh, and it says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, we'll go back up to the 21st verse, and we'll read back down and, and try to see what's going on. Actually, let's go up to the 19th verse. Mm -hmm. We'll go up to the 19th verse and read back down. The 19th verse, I'll be reading from the King James Version. You can read. You can follow from the version that you use. The 19th verse says, uh, The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. 20th verse, Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. 21st. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Focus verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So that's what we're dealing with. <laughs> that's what we're dealing with this morning. And uh, the, ob the, the obvious is the obvious is clear what we're dealing with. The obvious is clear. We're dealing this morning with worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
in the type of worship that God is looking for. Not to, uh, we're looking for the, we're, we're dealing with the type of worship that God is looking for. Mm -hmm. Now, worship says to revere, adore, it says the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity, honor. That's worship. That's what that's what we're dealing with this morning. Now the Bible said he's looking for uh, true worshipers. He's looking for worshipers to worship him in spirit. That suggests to us uh, trustworthiness, faithfulness, reality, genuine, steadiness, sure, something that is true as opposed to false. Truth is the property of being in accord with fact or reality. The word. That's what we're dealing with. When we're dealing with, uh, I'm sorry, I, I read the wrong thing. That was that was true. Now we're going to read the uh, description of spirit. The spirit is the non-physical part of a person which is the seat of the emotions and character, the soul, the life, the Holy Ghost. So, and and this, and this, these verses, this is what we get out of this verse. Now, Jesus is trying to let the, the Samaritan lady know. He's trying to let her know that worship true worship is not confined to a place. This is what he's trying to let her know. That true worship is not confined to a place. That's the first thing we have to understand. Now, the, the, the motivation, the thought is, is here is that there is a difference between religious worship and true worship. And this is what Jesus is trying to explain. This is what Jesus is putting emphasis on. The difference between religion or religious worship and true worship. And so he's letting the Samaritan lady know that there's going to come a time. And he said, and the time is now. That worship True worship will not be confined to just a place. God is looking for, uh, the Father is seeking and looking for true worshipers. And a true worshiper worships God in spirit and truth. Now visit our descriptions. Spirit, obviously, is the Holy Ghost. And spirit suggests the seat of emotions and character, it suggests the life. So what Jesus is letting the Samaritan lady know is that true true worship is a part of your life. All right. True worship is uh, the character of your life, mm -hmm. not a place. All right. He's letting them know not only spirit, but truth. And truth says, as opposed to false, you can't worship God in spirit and in truth and still agree with falsehood. Ah, we'll deal with that. All right. Truth is the property of being in accord with fact or reality, the word, basically. So, Jesus is letting the Samaritan lady know that the time is coming, and now is the time where the true worshipers is going to worship God or the Father in spirit and in truth, according to the Spirit of God, according to the Word of God, because thy word is true. And so truth is described as opposed to false and being in accord with fact or reality, which is the word of God. And so, 
under the law, under the law, uh, they they met. They had a, a, a tabernacle where they met in the tabernacle and so forth and on, and that's where they worship God. And then they go and do their thing, and and that's that's how it was. Now the lady was a Samaritan, a Samaritan, mm -hmm. and the Samaritans had. Uh, built them a temple in this mountain that she's talking about just like uh, Israel had a temple. Mm -hmm. And so the Samaritans used to worship in their temple. That's what she's talking about in that mountain. Just like the Jerusalem, just like the Jews used to worship in Jerusalem. And so Jesus is letting her know that the time is coming and now is the time where worship is not confined to just a place. Mm -hmm. True worship. The time is here now where true worship has to be done in spirit and in truth. 24th verse says, look, it says, God is a spirit. Yes, it is. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We have to understand that God is spirit. He's a spirit. Right. And in order to worship God, we have to worship him in spirit, which is our character. It said, which is the seat of emotions, our character, the soul, the life. Mm -hmm. God is looking for worshipers to worship him with their life. The wisdom of the preacher, Solomon, said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Right. Fear God and keep his commandments yeah. is the whole duty of man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord is looking for. Mm -hmm. He's looking for true worshipers. Right. Now, the danger with uh, religious worship and true worship, the, the, the contrast is that religious worship, religious worship says, when I get here on Sunday, I can act sanctified and glorify God. Ah! God has had enough of that. That's why he said the time is coming and the time is now where the true worshipers are going to worship God with their whole life, their, their, their whole mind, heart, soul, and strength. He said he's going to write his law in our mind and put them in our hearts. True worship will not be confined to a place. Now, if you remember the story that we're dealing with, Jesus asked the lady, the lady said that uh, she perceived that he was a prophet because he asked the lady, he asked the lady, go get your husband. And she said, I, I, I don't have a husband. And he said, you have right, rightfully answered. Mm -hmm. She said, you have had five husbands mm -hmm. and the one that you have now is not yours. Right. Now catch that. Mm -hmm. This type of worship, God is done with mm -hmm. to where the man that you got now is not yours, but you're going to come and uphold this mountain as far as the place of worship. All right, now. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll catch that. The man you got now is not yours, right. but yet you're standing uh, saying that this is the place where we, we ought to worship on this mountain. That type of worship uh, the Lord is done with. He said the true worshipers are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just at a, not just confined to a place okay. and a certain day. Yes. Okay. Where the rest of the time you can have a husband that's not yours. But at this day and at this place we're going to worship God. Well, worship is described as a expression of reverence and adoration for a deity honor yes. to revere. Mm -hmm. And so God is looking for us to revere and honor him in our being. Uh, Paul told the Romans to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, mm -hmm. which is our reasonable service. Yeah. Now I got to run. Uh, John 3 and 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Belly, belly, I say unto thee, 
Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3 and 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about true worshipers. True worshipers have to be born again. A true worshiper has to be regenerated. A true worshiper has to be regenerated. God is spirit. And our spirit, which we'll find out later in the text, in our lesson, our spirit has to be quickened. This is why we have to receive the Holy Ghost. Because without the Holy Ghost, we're spiritually, spiritually dead, alive in the flesh, Spiritually dead. This is why our spirit has to be quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because this is the worshiper that God is summoning in these last days. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Keep on moving. Philippians 3 and 3 says, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. This is what I'm talking about. Flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. John tells us what inherits the kingdom of God is being born again yes. of the water and the spirit. This is the true worshiper that the Lord is looking for, someone who has uh, given their entire life, their being, their soul, not someone that it's just confined to a place and come clap their hand. All right. mm -hmm. He said, these worship me with their lips. Yeah. He said, but their heart is far from me. We're talking about worship him in spirit and in truth. When we worship God in spirit and in truth, according to his desire, when we honor him according to his desire, then we'll love our neighbor. If we don't love our neighbor, and we're not worshipers of God. We have resorted back to only worshiping God at that place, <laughs> which that ignorance, God winked at. That day is over. Now he's calling for all of us to repent, be regenerated. And so the worship of the worship of God now is according to spirit and truth. It's according to his word, obedience to his word. Okay? You don't believe me? <laughs> Let me share this. Let's go to Colossians 3 and 3 and 4. Colossians 3 and 3 and 4 says, verse 3 says, For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him mm -hmm. in glory. <laughs> Woo! Right now, God don't want to see you or not. Mm -hmm. It said, when Christ appeared, then we'll appear with him in glory. It's, we're talking about true worshipers. Uh, you have to understand what Jesus is saying. True worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth. Our life, we have been redeemed. Jesus Christ died for our sins. We have been purchased with the price of the blood of the Lamb. He was the sacrifice. Yes. Now, those of us that are regenerated and born again, our life is hid in Christ. When God looks at us, he sees Christ. All right. Our life is hid. And if we go to a couple of scriptures above that, it tells us that, uh, that we should set our affection in Christ, yes. which is above and not on this earth. This is, we're talking about true worshipers. Mm -hmm. I, I can't be a true worshiper and don't love my enemy. Mm -hmm. Refer back to the Samaritan woman, but he tell her, you worship what you know not. 
when that is when that is our character, because spirit is character is perceived to be emotion. When that is our character, then we worship what we know not. Mm-hmm. Because the true worshiper loves his enemy. Understand worship is reverence and honor to God. So if I'm a worshiper of God, then not only do I love my enemy, but I love my neighbor as myself. Mm-hmm. He's looking for true worship. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm-hmm. Not, not pretenders, but worshipers. Mm-hmm. I could be with a husband t- today and then tomorrow I could be at the place of worship giving God honor and adoration. The, the time the, the, the time had filled with God with that. He was done with that. He's looking for true worshipers now. Second Corinthians uh, the third chapter in the 17th verse. Second Corinthians, third chapter, 17th verse. And we'll read uh, 18 also. It says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, not our glory, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is a true worshiper. This is a true worshiper. A true worshiper is, is transparent. When you, when A true worshiper, when he looks in the mirror, he sees the image of the Lord. He don't see the image of flesh and blood standing there. Mm-hmm. In other words, uh, woo, we, God is not looking for you and I in the carnal aspect. Yeah. That's, not, that's not worship to God. That's, God is a spirit. We have to catch this. God is a spirit. And the, the spirit or the character that God is looking for is spiritual. It is not carnal. So you you and I cannot make sanctification out of something that's unclean. I'm going to slow down because some of us think that we holy in our flesh (laughs) or by our flesh. No. An individual is holy because you have the Holy Ghost. If the Lord poured his spirit out of us, then we are dying with dozen. We're just like the next flesh. Mm-hmm. All flesh is grass. Yeah. And the beauty of it fades. All of it, as the flower is cut, the grass is cut and the flower it fades. Yeah. What gives us the ability to worship God truly is the spirit and the truth of the word. That gives us the ability to be faithful. That gives us the ability to endure. Uh, That gives us the ability to trust God. All the things, all the character that uh, describes true worship. It gives us the ability, it definitely gives us the ability to to deny sin. We have, we have, with the, whole, with the repentance and the water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, we have the power to overcome sin. This is what he's talking about. We're more than conquerors. We have that power. We have that ability. But it takes worship. It takes faith. It takes steadfastness. Mm-hmm. It takes these things. It takes the word of God mm-hmm. and not men's philosophies and men's feelings and what men think. Yeah. Bless. Uh, I got to move on. Yeah. Oh. First Corinthians fifteen forty five says, "And so it is written: the first man Adam was made a living soul; the last Adam was made a 
quickening spirit. That's what I had referred to earlier. The first man, Adam, was created from the dust of the ground. And God breathed into his nostril the spirit of life. Mm -hmm. And he became a living soul. The last Adam <laughs> was made a quickening spirit. In other words, he's made a life-giving spirit. He gives, he gives life. Yes. This is why the worshiper has to worship God in spirit and in truth. Because Jesus Christ is our salvation. He's a quickening spirit. He's the life-giving spirit. Mm -hmm. he, he brings us to worship. Which is it's, it's interesting. It's interesting because the church, a lot of times we, when we, we speak of the church, we speak of the building. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we speak of the church, we speak of the building. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear me. And there's nothing wrong with the building. But the church is the body of Christ. Yes. The church is the body of baptized believers. The water and the spirit fill individuals make the church true worship. The mountain, <laughs> Samaritan lady say, this is, our fathers worship in this mountain. Jesus said, uh, the time is coming, and now is when the true worshipers are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. God is the spirit. Yes. Jesus talking to that lady, he had, he had not died been buried and rose, rose again. He was talking to the hour when that come, when the Holy Ghost was going to fall. And then we would be able to worship God in spirit and truth. She didn't understand, just like uh, a lot of them didn't understand, until the day of Pentecost came. And then they began to remember the words that he said because the Holy Ghost bring back uh, his words to their remembrance. Right. So we, you and I are in a place where we have been born again. You and I are in a place where we are a part of the church. Mm -hmm. We're the body of Christ. Our worship cannot be confined to a place. Mm -hmm. Our worship has to be sun up to sun down. Mm -hmm. Our worship, our honor, our expression, our uh, reverence, our adoration, our love for God has to be 24-7 because it's not confined to a place, the true worshipers. Mm -hmm. Now we congregate, we assemble, we meet, we fellowship, all these things that I just call our spiritual. Notice I didn't say the building. Amen. Because we put too much emphasis on the mountain. <laughs> too much emphasis is being put on the building. All right, now. now the building has a purpose. We don't. The mountain took them to the coming of the Messiah. Now, once the Messiah come, then the emphasis is not on the mountain. Once you and I are born again believers, yes. the emphasis is not on the mountain. The emphasis is our worship that we owe unto God, our life that we owe unto God. Not how we perform in the building, but how we perform Amen. out in our life. Mm -hmm. yes. True worship. Case in point, Hebrews 13, verse 11 and 12. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without camp. Verse 12, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered 
without the gate. The time is now when the true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth. The sacrifice that they offered unto God was done, was burned outside the camp. I'm going to go slow for we can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the people with his blood he suffered without the gate. He suffered outside the gate. True worship that the Lord is looking for, for you and I. We, we have to suffer. We have to offer our sacrifice unto God out. Mm -hmm. Out. That's where the sacrifice was suffered at. That's where it was the sacrifice for Jerusalem. That's where it was burned at. Right. Outside the camp, yeah. the sacrifice for the blood of Christ for us, the people, was he suffered outside the gate. Yeah. God is looking for true worshipers outside. The church is the body of Christ. The church are the baptized believers filled. Baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sin and filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give utterance, as the second chapter of the book of Acts. That is the true worshiper. Acts 1 and 8 says that we shall or you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. For what? To be witnesses. Jerusalem, the Samaria, Judea, to the outermost ends of the world. True worship. True worship is, is the character of God's spirit is what he's looking for. God is love. God is patient. He's kind. He's long-suffering. Most of all, true worship God is no respect of person. I can't treat them on my job bad and treat them in the house of God good. Mm -hmm. that, word, that day of worship is over. Amen. That's not a true worshiper. Mm. Samaritans and Jews have no dealings. The lady say, you speak to me as Samaritan, we don't have no dealings with you. That day of worship is over. Amen. A true worshiper worships God in spirit and truth, worships God in the character of the spirit of God. Yes. You and I are hid. Mm. Mm. You and I are hid. So if so if I'm out front, I got to work on my worship a little more. We pray that you get something, that you got something. As, as it is, we always encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost so you can be a true worshiper and worship God in spirit and in truth. Before we let you go, let us pray. Bow in the gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we come. This morning, thank you once again for the visitation of the Spirit. You said, with two or three gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst. We thank you, Lord God, for the Word of God. We thank you for your salvation, and we thank you most of all that you're coming back to get us. And we praise you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.